Uh, I'm an Argo project maintainer, though probably the least of the maintainers. Uh, and I am also a co-creator of the Open GitOps project and uh, GitOps working group in, underneath the CNCF. And you can follow me on Twitter at Today Was Awesome. I would love to see you on there. And if you didn't like this talk, please rage at me on Twitter. And if you liked it, <laughs> be sure to tag me. Yeah, and I'm Brandon Phillips. I'm a principal technologist and also the head of our technical product marketing at CodeFresh. Uh, also the host of Merging to Main, which is a CICD webinar and podcast series. So feel free to check us out. You can at me at Techie Overtime on Twitter. Uh, just a little heads up, CodeFresh itself, we are an enterprise Argo solution. We've actually been working with Argo and customers for more than two years now, uh, and it's just been an amazing experience. Yeah, thank you, Brandon. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about Argo. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, how hard could it be, right? I mean, you have your desired state, you have your actual state, you know, following all the GitOps principles, we want those to sync up, you know, utilize our declarative configuration. How hard can it really be, Dan? Uh, it's pretty simple, right? Just comparing two things. Yeah, now my question is, let's just check with the audience here. Who's using Argo CD in production today? Everyone. Yeah, everyone. like everyone in the room. Okay. That, that is amazing. By the way, good job. Uh, so Argo itself, obviously an amazing project. It can be nearly bulletproof, but what happens when you start adding lots and lots of Kubernetes clusters? Uh, we know that the world is not that simple, right? You're not gonna get away with just having a few clusters linked into it, especially as you scale over time. You're gonna add more and more clusters. And what happens if we start to add even more Git repos? Um, as we know, you're not gonna have applications without source code repos. You're not gonna have uh, the clusters without applications to deploy to the clusters. So you start to grow and grow and grow. At what point could this potentially become a problem? Yeah, and uh, obviously 10,000 apps with different sync policies, different sized repos, you know, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, so then the question is, is one Argo instance enough? Um, can it handle everything that your organization needs? Maybe some of you are already separating out your Argo instances for other reasons, but if you're sticking with one Argo instance, maybe you're set up in Hub and Spoke, and you have a lot of clusters tied into a lot of applications, a lot of developers committing changes, you know, when is one Argo instance not enough, is the question. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is where people can sometimes get into trouble because all of you have deployed Argo already. You already have a bunch of users. You're working, you're feeling good, everybody's deploying apps, you're grooving, you're in sync. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And uh, so you're feeling great, but then as you keep on adding stuff, you're gonna start to notice different performance things. Now Argo CD has a ton of different knobs and things you can tweak to really extend the performance. So um, what we're gonna talk about today is some of the issues you might run into. It's not really focused on performance, it's more about figuring out how you can, uh, how you can preview those things before you hit them. Yeah, so the question is, let's say I'm hitting kind of the limit of, uh, or we think we're hitting the limits of what a single Argo CD instance can actually do. What kind of things might you actually experience when you hit that limit? What is the behavior that you might see? So uh, we've had actually a lot of people reporting different behavior to us over the last couple of days at this conference. We appreciate that. Come by the booth and we can talk about uh, whatever performance issues you're having. Maybe we can get them straightened out. Um, but typically things that become problematic, uh, slow reconciliation times. They're not necessarily an issue in terms of eventual consistency, but if you're trying to sync an application right now, eventual might be too far away. Uh, so you wanna think about your sync times, your sync depth queue. So if it takes you an hour to go through all of your applications, obviously that's gonna impact the end user experience, and that's gonna be a challenge. Um, other kinds of issues that uh, create problems are even things like the client side UI responsiveness. So uh, I've noticed that when I get up over around 7,500 apps in a cluster, in, a, in an Argo CD instance, that like my browser starts to struggle. <laughs> so at that point you're like, hey, can we issue more, more RAM to the machines yeah. of our users? Because uh, it's really a browser issue. Um, but there's a lot of different things you can run into. And the key here is we wanna give you some tools today so that you can find these things before they happen to your users. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to be the hero who fixes it before anybody finds out and then they don't know that you're the hero? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, that's always the goal, right? I mean, we wanna keep you know, development teams and DevOps teams from being blocked by situations like this. So having tools to actually validate that can help a lot. So let's, let's just take a quick poll. So for those of you that are running Argo CD in production, which seems like everybody in the audience, which is amazing, um, how many of you have more than 1,000 
apps out in, there. In one Argo In CPU. one Argo instance. Okay. More than a thousand, there's a handful. More than a thousand, all right. Thousand going once, going twice. All right, how about 3,000 applications? We got one over here. One over here, all right. How about? There's one, one over here. Oh, another one over 5, here. 5,000? Okay. Yeah, how about 5,000? One hand stayed up. How many do you have? What did he say? 5,400. 5,400. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the KubeCon talk you need to go to. This was the wrong <laughs> one. Because he might have it figured out. So uh. Uh, I actually talked to somebody yesterday who deployed 15,000 in a production instance. Yep. Uh, so that's, that was yesterday I was talking with somebody. They should have got him. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we are going to go uh, not quite to 10,000 today, but there is a wonderful tool that we have for you. It's called Gen Resources. Like I said, it's secret, hidden undocumented. So it's a chance for you to learn how to use this tool and you can actually document it and you can get that first commit into the open source project. Yeah, and, so uh, Dan, where can I actually find it? Yeah, it's been hiding in plain sight this oh. whole time. Okay. In the Argo really? CD repo, yeah. Wait, wait, just in the main repo? Yep, in the main oh, repo okay. under the hack folder. Now, hack folders are famous for all the secret goodies. I recommend when you go to an open source project, first thing you do is look in the hack folder because that's where all kinds of shenanigans are happening. <laughs> uh, so this tool that we have here is called Gen Resources, and um, it has a simple job. It basically acts as a sort of an agent of chaos for your, for your Argo instance, and it will generate clusters. Now here we leverage vCluster, and it's very simple. Basically, it's gonna use Helm to deploy a whole bunch of vClusters, as many vClusters as you want. Um, now, there's some really interesting nuances about how Argo, how Argo CD works with clusters mm -hmm. because you can replicate out repo server, which allows you to shard jobs across, uh, across all these different clusters. Now, we're not going to do that today because um, it would make it less likely to break. <laughs> and we want to break it. I think so we'd let's rather break it. So <laughs> um, it also generates applications. Uh, and usually with Argo CD, there's a kind of a confusion that you think, oh, I have a lot of apps. Um, so, for example, this gentleman over here has over 5,000 apps on an instance, and you might be saying, hey, I'm struggling with 500. What's the deal? Well, it's probably because of the number of objects that are under management. So objects are actually the bigger deal, and how, many, how those objects are distributed across different Kubernetes APIs, because if you have one Kubernetes API handling all of those objects, it's going to be a bigger challenge. So yeah. there are situations where we see that Argo CD is running fine, but the issue is actually the Kubernetes API is too slow. So in that case, even splitting up a cluster with vCluster can actually help you scale what Argo is doing because you're actually helping scale what, what uh, Kubernetes API has to handle. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a key thing here is as well, this is maybe not going to always give you the smoking gun, but it's gonna help you eliminate variables when you're scaling on where you might have you know, performance blockers. Yeah, so let's get into uh, this demo here. And uh, hopefully this is big enough, you can see it. Um, so uh, I'm inside of the, the secret hack folder with the gen resources, and there's a command there. And to build this, you just do a go build, and you output, and you can name it whatever you want. I named it Argo CD Generator because I didn't like consistency. This is a chaos talk, okay? <laughs> so that's what we're doing. So uh, building it is pretty quick. It, don't, it only takes about 10 seconds. Um, and then uh, we have a file in here. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you here. Um, look at that. Colorful, too. Fancy talk. Um, so this file is basically an argument that you can pass to Gen Resources, and it allows you to specify how many applications you want to make, and then you have a strategy for the sources of those applications and their destinations. Currently, there's one argument available. It is random you could be the person <laughs> to implement the second strategy. That could be you. Uh, and Anytime. Then, yeah. Uh, and then um, you give it a number of clusters, and then it's going to take a values file that's going to be passed to the vCluster Helm chart. Um, and then you can specify if you want these operations to happen in parallel. Uh -huh. I've found that if I'm spinning up like a 1,000 of these, it like takes a long time. So having parallelism happening is very nice. Yeah. Um, it'll throw errors and retry if the Kubernetes API hasn't loaded yet, and so uh, it's pretty robust in that way. Um, and then it will generate repositories and projects 
uh, for you. So, and, and Dan, where do those repositories come from? Yeah, all of these applications. This is another agent of chaos <laughs> element for you. This is a great idea uh, by Alexander uh, Matsunayev for, for those of, that are aware of the other maintainers. Um, he said, where can we find a whole bunch of repos that have files that we can deploy? And he said, a sure hell of a lot of people have forked the Argo CD repo, <laughs> and those have a demo files in them. So this basically pulls all of the forks of Argo CD and then deploys them onto your cluster. <laughs> so beware, there be dragons, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if deploying random stuff from the internet sounds like a bad idea to you, this might not be the talk for you. <laughs> Uh, but if you would like to help out, uh, uh, you can go and fork the Argo CD repo right now, and it'll give us more applications for other people to deploy. Um, if you wanted to take extra steps and have like a Kyverno policy to make sure that only the images that were you wanted were deployed, that wouldn't be a bad idea. But you might not want to deploy this. I wouldn't deploy this into a production cluster, and I, I uh, would be careful deploying it into a cluster that had networking access to other stuff. Yeah, definitely sandboxed. Yeah, sandbox this one for sure. Uh, double bag it, folks. We're in Amsterdam. All right. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is um, let's uh, modify this and actually start spinning up some resources. And while we're doing that, uh, we're going to – I'll show you what the demo environment looks like. So applications here. Uh, let's go to – let's generate 2,000 applications. And uh, I'm only going to generate one cluster because the cluster takes a little while to generate, like just a few seconds. But if we're doing like 100, we'd be here for a couple of minutes. And that might be fun for you, might be fun for me, but we have a time to, we have a schedule. Um, repositories, we'll stick with 50. We'll do 50 projects. That looks pretty good. Save this. And now uh, we're going to go ahead and run this file. And you're going to see it starts by generating all my projects. Um, we actually use this tool. The reason that this tool was created, it was really created by uh, Alexander M. and Pasha uh, from the CodeFresh team. And uh, I made a few small code tweaks on it and then claimed credit for the whole thing. Um, but uh, they created this because when we're working on Argo CD, we need to be able to profile performance over time. So we use this tool to run against Argo CD and figure out if there are any big gotchas in the performance that are changing over time before yeah. we ship it to, to, uh, to you, you folks. Um, so while this is happening, so it's firing off the V cluster, and then you'll be able to see the applications fire off in a second. Uh, I'll introduce you to our demo environment. So you can see I've got an Argo CD instance that we already have uh, 850 applications out of sync, 100 synced. Um, I bootstrapped this with Argo CD Autopilot. Yep, yep. Uh, you want to tell people what Ar Argo CD Autopilot is? Yeah, absolutely. So Argo CD Autopilot, it's one of the Argo Labs projects. Uh, you can utilize it to easily basically spin up the Argo uh, you know, runtime itself, but also bootstrap repos and bootstrap the cluster setup. It makes it very easy to kick this process off. So I'd recommend you check out that project. I was hucking random stuff onto this cluster before we started, and you said, what happens if it falls over? And I can said well, I can just do a repo bootstrap <laughs> with Argo Studio Autopilot and it'll come back, though, maybe after the talk. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so now we've got these running. Um, you can also see I've got a Grafana dashboard. This is not a special one. This is the one that's available in the community. You can see I've currently got 69 clusters deployed. That wasn't on purpose, I promise. Uh, I've got around, oh, see, we're over 100 now. Um, you can see I'm at, currently at 952 applications, 42 repositories. And there are a couple of things that we can look on here that are pretty important. And uh, my dashboard's gonna start getting a little funky as we show this, but um, reconciliation performance shows you how long each app is taking on average. And so when uh, you're having issues with um, rendering manifests and applying them, and maybe you need to scale up repo server, or you need to change how much memory you're allocating to it, you'll see this one start to tick up uh, in its time. But the bigger issue is actually the ones that take infinite time. So those ones obviously failed. So as that queue depth uh, backs up, it'll start to create a problem. Um, looks like it's getting that V cluster running still. Like I said, it takes a few minutes. Um, you can also see reconciliation activity. So currently right now it's reconciling around 470 apps per 10 second window or something like that. Um, and most of our applications are not currently synced. Well, it's not even, sometimes Prometheus slows down. Okay, so now we can <laughs> see that it's actually uh, setting up random applications. And as it's doing this, we'll actually see our, clus our uh, cluster count start to rise 
in Prometheus. The way that Argo CD works with clusters, when you add them, um, they'll show up with no status uh, because nothing is syncing to it. So once you assign an application to it, they'll actually start counting. So there are actually more clusters here than are currently being shown. Um, they just haven't had any applications assigned to it. Yeah, they'll start to pop in. Just takes a little bit of time. Yeah. Now, uh, as I refresh this again, we should see our application count starting to grow a little bit, our cluster count starting to grow a little bit. Uh, this is this application depth shows you also how the queue rises. So if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see my out of sync count is currently 842. It should start ticking up as it starts processing these applications and actually finding them and reconciling them. Because what uh, Gen Resources actually does is it just creates the application custom resource in Kubernetes. Yeah. So you have to wait a few seconds for the for Argo CD to discover it, start syncing it, start throwing it into uh, it, the caching and all of that stuff. Yeah, and I think generally, you know, for your developers out there, your teams that are delivering code, the reconciliation time in your production environments or even your lower environments is really the first thing that you're probably going to notice. Yeah, I um, think I, I think that's something that might be like. Uh, you know, if your UI is not working, that may or may not be a big issue for you. Yeah. Uh, because if you're operating entirely from Git, maybe you're only using it for like debugging and stuff, and that's important, but it's going to be deploying, it's going to be yeah. syncing. Maybe some Argo CD core users in here, you don't even use a UI, you're hardcore, <laughs> you wouldn't have those kinds of issues. But um, definitely like monitoring this from a user perspective and what you're trying to accomplish is a pretty important task. So if you just spin up a cluster and you start throwing this thing at it, um, it'll give you the experience of going through and starting to tweak those knobs, like changing how many repo servers there are, uh, changing the memory um, on, on the processors. Uh, there's even like you can change uh, how frequently the Kubernetes API is hit, um, yeah. which is a pretty important one, especially depending on your cluster setup. In this case, I'm using a lot of clusters, a lot of V clusters. So each Kubernetes API isn't getting hit very hard. So if you plan to have one cluster with 10,000 applications, I wouldn't spin up a bunch of clusters. I would just yeah. throw the applications at it. Um, sure. But keep in mind the uh, object count because it's really about the objects a lot more than it is about the, uh, the application number itself. So it's a good proxy for objects. But um, in this case, there aren't like tons of objects for each of these applications. All right, so you can see this is starting to count up pretty good. Uh, if I go ahead and refresh my Prometheus, um, you can see we've just jumped up to 1,700 applications. Now, right now, it's still showing 101 clusters. There are probably closer to 180 clusters on here, but because it hasn't gotten through the reconciliation depth for those clusters yet, it's not recognizing them. So this shows you how the process, like you can see it happening in real time. Um, for example, you can see over here under the sync status, the unknowns has, has jumped. So this white line represents all of the applications that Argo CD hasn't gotten to to figure out you know, what the repo is even doing, where it's supposed to be deployed. Uh, and so as we work through the queue, maybe I shouldn't have done 1,500, <laughs> I'm coming to think about it. Um, but as it starts to work through the queue, this will start to come down and you'll see all of the sync statuses start to show up. Um, we have another tool in the hack folder that I didn't want to present today because it's more rough around the edges, but it's called Simulator. And basically what it does is it deploys uh, fake developers onto your cluster and they just go around and sync stuff and delete apps and break things. Uh, so yeah. it's sort of like a toddler. <laughs> basically, who's a developer here in the room? Okay, you're the danger. Everybody's <laughs> off. Yeah, you're the danger. <laughs> they're, the, they're the danger. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, you can see my application count is now up to two, uh, over 2,000, but my unknown queue is um, sitting stuck because I'm getting, uh, I'm getting pulled, I'm getting bottlenecked, basically, with repo server being able to handle it. So let's cut off, well, we're almost done to the 1,500. I guess we can let it finish. Um, uh, Brandon said, well, we should make it break. I think people will like to see that. <laughs> Mostly what that looks like is like, just it stops loading. So it's like, not like, it's like, hey, you ever seen a, a failed to load page? Uh, that's amazing. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like. So uh, you can see we're still missing several thousand applications that the UI hasn't caught up with. Yeah, they're just queued. Um, yeah. While we're letting that load for a second, uh, keep in mind that this is going to cost a lot of resources. Uh, this is one of the only talks I've ever done where I s 
spun up all of the nodes before this, and then I thought, this is going to be an expensive 25 minutes. <laughs> uh, uh, I also, um, the most I've done is uh, a little, somewhere over 10,000 applications, um, and uh, I documented the whole journey, and there's a whole talk on this that you can follow. Um, there's also a lot of work being done by some other folks that I'll talk about in a second, actually. Um, conservatively, uh, in this case, I'm using Argo CD HA. Uh, most of you are probably not, who's using Argo CD HA? Keep your hand down if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. okay, so all of these yeah. folks deployed the version of Argo CD that allows you to um, spin up your Redis instances and uh, uh, increase the replicas of Argo CD very effectively. So in this case, I'm actually using Argo CD HA. So these numbers that I'm showing you will actually not apply to most of you because you're not using the HA version. It's really easy to switch and it's very low resource uh, cost if you're not scaling it. So yeah. I would actually probably recommend it. Uh, but you can expect at least 1,500 apps, 14,000 objects, 50 clusters, 200 developers before stuff ha starts to maybe need to be tweaked. Yeah, and these are pretty rough estimates, right? Yeah, it and vary a lot. because like 50 clusters, it's like, well, you can see I've actually got like 200 clusters right. on here, and I'm still using it, and it's yeah. working okay. Uh, but there's only like one application. On yeah, it. yeah, for sure. And so it could vary based on your environment, you know, the size of uh, your clusters and, you know, what your devs are actually committing as well. So yeah, so it can get quite change. expensive. Uh, oh, sorry, I mean, um, you can get you can get pretty uh, efficient with this and you can really tweak it. So Argo CD is very, very scalable. There are a lot of reasons why you'd want to have more instances, though. Um, and this goes into some of the scalability content that we put out. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's one area because, you know, we've worked with a lot of folks and talked to a lot of people who are learning how to scale out Argo, learning how to make it more resilient in their environments. And so we wanted to start a document, you know, some of that change that we're experiencing out there and some of the growth around Argo as well. And so there's two blog posts that I would highly recommend checking out. One is about scaling Argo securely in 2023. Uh, and it also talks about the architecture models and some of the ways that you can spin it up. And then we have another great one that does a deep dive of the Argo CD architecture and talks about you know, how you would utilize it in your environment, what's the best way to grow it. And then I think just in general, you know, I think we talk about the HA, right? Just to say, hey. Yeah, HA model, yeah. hub and spoke models, uh, standalone versus uh, using a control plane. Yeah. There's, there's probably six different architectures documented on there. Yeah. And both of these are evergreen. We keep these updated uh, very regularly. Yeah, and so they'll continue to get changes and you know, we are sure that there will be architectural improvements as well over the next year, a couple years. Before we check back in on how the demo is going, is there anywhere else that they can learn from? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you should check out our GitOps certification. So who here has done our GitOps certification? Okay. Like yeah. percent of the audience. That's a, quite a few hands. That's great. Um, so we do a GitOps certification. We have two different levels. Uh, the primary level is actually, you know, it's a lot of the basics, but you do get into rollouts and doing canary and blue-green deployments. The second level, it actually, you know, you do a deep dive in things like the pull request generator and the other generators. We, tar we start talking about the Argo CD. How to organize generator. your repositories. Yeah. You can't get to this kind of scale if your repositories don't make sense. Yeah. Uh, so that's really helpful. We have two codes for you. Yep. Me love chaos. <laughs> for those that are quick, there's a, that gives you 100% off. The, the certification will be free. Uh, for those that didn't catch it, uh, me slow chaos you get a 50% uh, off. And uh, come by the Go Code Fresh booth. I'm sure they'll give you some codes. Um, let's check in on how this is going. So we'll refresh the UI here and see how quickly it responds. Uh, we should have decent performance here. You can see we finished generating all of our applications. Oh, we generated 2,000. OK, well, it's good to keep track. Um, and if I let's pull up Grafana and see if we're able to refresh that. Uh, so yeah, we've, we're just peaking around 3,000 applications. It looks like our sync status is still sitting very high on the unknowns. We've got a little over 1,100 that have been like figured out by Argo CD at this point, and there are 1,700 still working through the queue. Um, there is a worker queue depth. Oh yeah, you can see the worker queue depth has actually started to stall out because it's been sputtering. Uh, this is just during the spin-up period, but you can also see in this scenario where like once this is all operating, it'll be working. But also, 
how long does it take me to get all the way around Robin back to uh, my applications being kind of fully functional again? Yeah, I mean, how long does it take to get to consistency, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the real question. Um, you can also see my memory usage has actually started to stall. So I think some pods have been killed. Uh, and so it's restarting them. Uh, so that's happening. You can see my UI is starting to <laughs> struggle a little bit. Um, while that's loading for a second, uh, so now that the secret is out, there is a project within Argo called SIG Scalability. This is something that was started by CodeFresh, AWS, IBM, Acuity, Red Hat, and Adobe. And uh, there's really great work done by AWS. Last week they presented on a lot of findings from their usage of these kinds of tools to figure out the different um, areas that will start to go wrong when you're using EKS specifically. Yeah. Uh, and there are several tickets that we opened off of that. Um, but I think that's a presentation you can find online. And uh, if you join the SIG Scalability channel, all the slides are in there and they have some really interesting uh, tweaks that you can do to uh, update your performance. We'd love for you to join us in this Slack channel. And if you're interested in scalability, we'd love your help. Uh, I already gave you several easy contributions you could make today. <laughs> um, and then finally, I just wanted to thank Midjourney for chaotically generating all of these bizarre different Argonauts for us uh, for the presentation. So with that, um, we're gonna let this, oh look, it's loaded. So one last thing, and then maybe we can take a few questions unless somebody tackles us from the stage. Um, <laughs> Brandon, should I, uh, should I sync apps? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> should, should I sync one app? No, I don't think so. You want, you want me to sync all apps? I think you should sync all apps. Okay, let's, let's auto. Let's find out what happens. Let's sync all apps. <laughs> okay, so remember, I'm just deploying random apps from the internet here. Uh, so, To the wide open internet. I don't want to give actually. anybody the idea to deploy like Bitcoin miners into these four <laughs> repos. It will run for like two minutes. I'm going to shut it down. So, you know, it wouldn't be worth it. Um, but yeah, we're going to let this sync. Uh, and that's when you say... What is it thinking about? Yeah, OK. <laughs> uh, so, I was definitely going to say that. <laughs> so with that, um, I think we could take a couple questions, if anybody has any. Actually, I have a question for the audience first. Yeah. So has someone out there like provided a lot of custom tweaks already on their Argo instance? Is anyone heavily customizing their Argo instances out there? Scaled repo server. Yeah. The guy with 5,000 apps raised his hand, yeah. OK, just curious. All right. I mean, that, to me, that proves that Argo CD is immensely scalable already, but oh, yeah. there's always more progress to be made, right? Yeah, and uh, I do, th I, <laughs> we, we, it's fun to push it like this, yeah. but generally, I recommend to people that they have multiple Argo CD instances for organizational Right, reasons. separation of responsibilities, right, as well. Yeah, and blast radius. In this case, if this were a production cluster and some knucklehead connected to it, like one of you knuckleheads connected to your production cluster after this and started throwing this at it, you know, your admin's gonna suddenly be freaking out and you're gonna be affecting production apps. So, you know, don't do that, but um, <laughs> someone could do it. So it's good to be aware of. And, uh, and so it's, it's good to separate concerns so your blast radius is relatively low. So um, this, is gonna t this is gonna be a while. So this isn't <laughs> gonna like be a fast process or anything. So we'll, we'll do one more refresh on the, on the Grafana here. And then open it to questions. And then open it to questions, yes. Okay, so what, what do we top out at? just under 3,000 applications. Um, well, can we ask you to give us a round of applause? Thank you. <laughs> uh, any questions? Uh, I think we're pretty close on time, but uh, raise your hand, shout it out. Really? I'm surprised. Totally clear to everybody. Okay. <laughs> we did a great job. We crushed it. All right. So well, you guys are going to go out there and run it right away, right? You're going to start testing boundaries. Okay. If you have any other questions, feel free to hit up Brandon and I. We're going to be at the CodeFresh booth uh, the next two days, uh, or you can find me potentially at the Argo booth. I'm between one of the two for the rest of the conference. Thanks, everybody. Have yeah, a great PoopCon. Enjoy.